Today's forecast, cloudy with a chance of credential exposure. Let's get to work. What's up one and all, Mr. Toolbox back with another Amazon Lumberyard video. Today we're going to start tackling Cloud Canvas. Even the breadth of things you can do with AWS and with Cloud Canvas specifically, this is going to be a multi-part video, but today I want to get through the setup of a new project with Cloud Canvas enabled. Generally when I make these multi-part videos, they can be taken out of sequence. They're meant to highlight a particular aspect of something. In this case, this first video is going to be foundational for the ones that come next. I'll be setting up the IAM profile or the, the users in the groups and configuring the project so that we can use Cloud Canvas in the next few videos. So this one is a must do if you're gonna do Cloud Canvas in your project. Before we get rolling, I'm gonna assume that you've got an AWS account. If you don't hit pause, go sign yourself up. You're gonna need it. Moving on from my admonitions, it's time to open the project configurator and we're going to create a new project. Go ahead and give that a click. Again, we won't have the cursor in the name field, so click in there. I'll call this CC Demo Project. Please, whatever you do, do not put underscores in your project name. It will only lead to heartache. As always, do take note, we do need to run LumberWAF Configure when we're all done. We'll get to that in a moment. Once you got the name in there, Click Create Project. Once the project exists, we need to enable some gems, so we'll click Enable Gems underneath our project name. I'm going to follow the samples project pretty closely here and tick them all, except for a couple. The one we're really after here is this Cloud Canvas AWS. But I will walk through this list. The only two I'm going to leave unchecked are the in-app purchases and OSVR. I don't plan on using the majority of these, but you never know. Once we get down to the bottom, which we're fast approaching, we will be in a position to go ahead and click Save. And you can come back to Projects. Make sure you've got your new project checked. You can give it a click and hit Set as Default just for giggles. And we're ready to close the Project Configurator. Now that we've made the project, we need to open an administrative command prompt so we can configure and build it. I've got one open here, but if you do this on your own, you can head down to start, type in CMD. If you hold Control, Shift, and press Enter, you'll get a UAC prompt. You can't see it on screen now. Click Yes, and you'll see you have administrator colon command prompt. You need to make sure that you've got that administrator in there to run these steps. And you're at the command prompt, cd into wherever you've installed Lumberyard. I have it here in my D drive in Program Files, Lumberyard. And enter the version that you're working with. I'm in 1.6. And then into the dev folder. That's where we need to run these commands. So once you're there, lmbr underscore waf dot bat space configure. Press enter and this step will take a little bit of time to complete. If it returns really quickly with a sea of red about missing required SDKs, you've probably fallen victim to the new lightweight installer. It doesn't install a bunch of SDKs by default. I'll show you what to do about that once this finishes. All right, my configures returned. It looks pretty hairy, but it's actually okay. Um, I don't have any of those missing required SDK lines in here, so I'm good to go. If you do see that, what you need to do is jump into the Setup Assistant for Lumberyard. Let that load up for a second. And here's the step, Install Required SDKs. If you give that a click, what you'll likely see is a bunch of red X's over here on the right next to Status. Just make sure you click Install All or just go through and install the ones that you need. Once you got that done, you can close this up, run the LumberWAF configure again, and you'll be good to go. Okay, so the LumberWAF configure has finished. The next thing we need to do is run LumberWAF again, this time with build underscore win underscore x64 underscore profile dash p space game. Press enter, this one will take a little bit of time too. I will rejoin you when it finishes. 
At the end of the build step, you'll see the build win x64 profile finish successfully. It'll tell you how long it took. That's the line you're looking for. Once that is done, just go ahead and minimize that command prompt. You will need it again later. All right, here's where my masking skills are really going to be put to the test because we have to jump into the AWS console and create an IAM user. So let's open up a browser. I'm going to use Internet Explorer just because it's not polluted with personal stuff because I never use Internet Explorer. Go to aws.amazon.com, click my account, and then log in. Once you log in, you'll be at your dashboard. Before we create the IAM user, you're going to need your account ID a little bit later on, and it's easy to get from here. So in the top menu bar, hover over your name, give it a click, head down to My Account, click that. It'll bring you to the Billing Management dashboard, and up at the very top of that screen, you should see your account ID. Just make note of it for later. So we need to get to the IAM section of the dashboard. There's two ways to do that. You can expand all services and you'll find it here under security, identity, and compliance. Or in the search bar, you can just type IAM and it'll be the only option available to you. So give that a click. When you get to the identity and access management dashboard, we need to click users over in the left-hand navigation. And we're going to click add user going to ask you for a username. I'll call this Cloud Canvas Admin. I'm kind of following the doc here for the most part. And the access type is going to be programmatic access. Once you got those ticked and filled in, go ahead and click Next for permissions. Now I've already got a group that's got the administrator access policy attached, but we'll follow along with the doc and create a new one here. So we're going to click Create Group. For the group name, we'll call this Cloud Canvas Administrators, I suppose. What we need to do is search for Administrator Access. We'll find that third down once I've typed that much. Give that a tick and click Create Group. We'll see it ticked down here at the bottom and we're ready to move on. One word of warning about that administrator access policy, that is pretty much free reign on your AWS account. Use it wisely, never share it, make sure you know who's in it at all times, and if you're not actively using that user or that group, just get rid of them. They're more of a liability than you need. Once we've got the group checked, we can scroll down just a bit and click next to review. All seems pretty straightforward, so we can go ahead and click Create User. When we do that, it'll generate the user. We'll see an access key ID and a secret access key. What you want to do is record those. You can click Download CSV and you'll get a uh, file that's got that stuff in it. But do make sure you save those. You won't see them again. It just occurred to me that we selected Programmatic Access but didn't select console access for our new user, so we need to fix that. We'll go back over to users in the left-hand navigation, find our Cloud Canvas admin and click the name. Click the Security Credentials tab, and you'll see Console Password. What we need to do is click the pencil to the right of that, tick the Enable button, go ahead and set a password here. And then you can optionally click Require Password Reset. Since I'm going to be using this myself, I won't do so. Click Apply, and now that user can sign in to the portal. Now that that's done, we can use our new Cloud Canvas admin to log into the portal. And to do that, what we're going to do is go to the console login link for IAM users. That'll be your account ID dot sign in dot aws dot amazon dot com forward slash console i'll pop that on screen right now but you'll use that from now on with your iam user so i've got that popped open here i'll go ahead and type in the username which was cloud canvas admin enter the password we just created and click sign in 
You'll see something pretty familiar. We're at the same console, but we used a different authentication endpoint to get there. Once we've verified that that works, we can minimize our web browser and start to work on Lumberyard itself. You'll remember we already set our new project as default in the project configurator, so I opened up the editor and I'm going to create a new level. Call this cc underscore demo underscore one. Leave everything else as default. Defaults there as well. Once that's had a minute to do its thing, what we can do is come up to the main menu bar, click AWS, and give a click on Credentials Manager. You'll be greeted with this little window here. We'll need to click Add Profile. It'll ask for a name. I'll call this Cloud Canvas Administrator just for consistency's sake. And this is where we're going to enter those two bits of information we saved about our new IAM user. That'll be the access key ID and the secret key. I'll do that and then I'll click save. I'll meet you back at the end. Once you've got those credentials entered, you'll see a new profile down here in the list and you are ready to go by clicking OK. We're very nearly out of the woods, just a couple more steps to go. Thanks for keeping up here. Next thing we need to do is initialize Cloud Canvas from the command line. So we'll pop open that command line that we had stashed away, clear it up so we can see what we're doing. And then in the same directory we've been working in, the dev directory, what we need to do is lmbr aws, which is a .cmd, create-project-stack-region, and then give it an AWS region. I'm going to use US East 1 because I know it supports Amazon Cognito. You do need to make sure whichever region you pick does support Cognito. Check the region table if you're not sure or if you live outside the US and want to use one closer to you. Then we can press enter and give it some time to complete. Accept the warning. And I'll meet you back when we're done. If you're wondering what this does, it creates some cloud formation stacks and then it spits out some JSON files. Yes, I say JSON and not JSON. I like the sound of JSON better. And then it uploads them to an S3 bucket. So if you were to jump into your AWS console, you can actually see that bucket in your S3 uh, dashboard. So here's the project settings JSON and then got some uploads with some UUIDs, a zip file, another JSON. You can actually see exactly what got created by typing lumber aws.cmd list dash resources. See we've got the bucket, a couple lambda functions, and then a couple of new roles in identity and access management. All right, two more steps and we're home free. One more thing we need to run at the command line is to create a resource group to hold our resources. We'll do that from lumber aws as well. And it'll be add dash resource dash group dash dash resource dash group. We've got to give it a name. I'll call mine CC demo. And we'll do a dash dash include example resources. Press enter and let that go. It'll happen pretty quickly and it creates some more JSON files. And we're set. We can see what that did, or rather what it will do, if we enter lumber aws.cmd list dash resource dash groups. You'll see, it's, you'll see it's set to create pending because we haven't actually created any deployments. That is the last step and the one we'll tackle right now. We jump back into the lumberyard editor. I did have it closed when we ran those commands just for safety's sake. What we're going to do is come back up to AWS, down to Cloud Canvas, and we'll enter the Resource Manager. What we'll need to do is expand Administration, and we'll click Deployments, and click Create Deployment. I'm going to call mine Demo, click Create, and we'll wait for that to finish. And that's it, we're done.
In the next part, we'll go over exactly what we've enabled ourselves to do. We'll start throwing some resources in AWS. If you go through these deployment steps and it fails, usually around the uh, player access identity pool or player login identity pool, there seems to be a problem with the project management um, IAM template. I want to show you how to get around that. I'm back in my IAM dashboard. What I want to do is go to roles, find the project resource handler execution role name that correlates to the project we're working with. Give it a click. Down here you'll see it's got this project access policy name. The Lumberyard version of this seems to be busted so what I did was came down to edit policy, zoom down to the bottom of the policy document. This IAM pass role is what we're looking at. The resource line will be right after it and by default that'll have one entry in it. It's going to be ARN colon AWS colon IAM colon colon and then an account ID that starts with five. Mine doesn't. I don't know if that's a holdover from somebody generating that or what. What you need to do is replace that line with a list of two entries. First of those entries will be to replace that bogus account ID with your account ID colon role slash the name of your project slash and then an asterisk and then the next one you can copy and paste the same thing and then just hack off the slash and star at the end and just put a star I wrestled with this for a bit a while back I don't know where that weird account ID comes from but replacing it with your own account ID which you'll find elsewhere in the, the policy document and then tacking on these role names will get you where you're going. All right, like I said, in part two, we'll start taking a look at what we can do now that we've connected to AWS. There's some pretty neat stuff we can do, so I'm excited about that. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave comments, join the Lumberyard Slack community. We've been having some great conversation lately. I'd love for you to be a part of it. And if you have any problems getting through what we've talked about in this video, that Slack channel is a perfect place to get some answers. We're hanging out in there pretty much nonstop these days. So jump in, ask your questions, get some answers. All right, bye.